Currently, America is Israel's largest and most vocal supporter in the world, with their friendship going back decades. Here's what you need to know about their relations. Key facts about Israel-US relations. Ever since the 1960s S, the United States and Israel have been very close. The US has facilitated peaceful relations between neighboring Arab countries and Israel. America managed to promote peace in the area amongst Jordanian, Egyptian and Lebanese relations with Israel. In fact, their partnership is so strong that Israel is the largest ever recipient of US foreign aid. Up until February of 2022, the United States sent a staggering $150 billion to the Middle Eastern state in bilateral assistance. In 1999, the US government entered into a Memorandum of Understanding, pledging to provide Israel with a minimum of $2.67 billion in annual military aid for the next decade. This amount increased to $3 billion in 2009 and further rose to a minimum commitment of $3.8 billion annually in 2019. What's more, since 1972, the US has extended loan guarantees to Israel, which means Israel can borrow money from banks in America at a lower rate. When you couple all of this with the fact that the United States is Israel's largest trading partner, it's fair to say that Israel and the US are locked in. Financial support and military aid isn't where Israel and US relations end though. The US is one of the most politically vocal allies of Israel at a global level. For reference, the US has used its veto powers in the UN over 40 times to condemn resolutions against Israel. Just between 1991 and 2011 alone, the US used 15 of its 24 vetoes to protect Israel. Relations evolved. Before the State of Israel was established, previous American presidents, supported by different groups such as the American and World Jewish communities, civic groups, labor unions and political parties, officially maintained a stance of acquiescence to the concept of a Jewish homeland. Amidst ongoing conflict in the region and worsening conditions among Holocaust survivors in Europe, the United Nations General Assembly, backed by the US, implemented resolution 181 on the 29th of November 1947. This outlined a solution to the conflict, a partition plan with the Economic Union for Palestine. The voting process was heavily influenced by Zionist supporters, a fact noted by President Truman himself. As the end of the mandate approached, the decision to recognize the Jewish state remained very controversial within President Truman's administration. A lot of disagreement was arising between President Truman, who sympathized with the Zionist cause, and a handful of his key advisors, such as the Secretary of State George Marshall. While Truman was concerned about the plight of displaced persons, Marshall feared that US backing of a Jewish state could harm relations with the Muslim world, which would in turn limit access to Middle Eastern oil, and eventually lead to destabilizing the entire region. Finally though, on May 14, 1948, just two days after a gathering of the Jewish People's Council in Tel Aviv, the United States, under President Truman, became the first country to extend any form of recognition to the newly declared State of Israel. This decision was nothing less than historic and foreshadowed the positive relations between these two countries in the future. US newly formed Israel. When Israel was a new state, conditions were austere and the future would have been bleak if not for all the aid and reparations pouring into the country. The United States, too, stepped up and sent in a modest amount of economic aid to the newborn state, mostly in the form of loans for essential food supplies. In the years after the Second World War, almost 86% of Israel's GDP was coming from German war reparations, which eventually helped the region develop. During the 1956 Suez Crisis, Israel, with French and British forces, entered Egypt. They wanted to counter President Gamal Abdel Nasser, reclaim the Suez Canal after its nationalization, and occupy portions of Western Sinai to secure free passage in the Gulf of Aqaba for Israel. The US, supported by the Soviet Union at the UN, intervened in favor of Egypt, compelling a withdrawal. After the Suez Crisis, PM Nasser showed interest in forming closer ties with the United States. The US was trying to remain neutral at the time and avoided siding with Israel too much, and so only provided food aid during this period. 
It wasn't until the early 1960s that the US started selling advanced defensive weapons to Israel, Egypt, and Jordan. Kennedy and Establishment of Relations As president, John F. Kennedy forged security ties with Israel, establishing the US-Israeli military alliance. After he came to power in 1961, Kennedy lifted the arms embargo on Israel, enforced by the Eisenhower and Truman administrations, symbolizing a strong commitment to Israel's protection. He also introduced the concept of a special relationship amongst the two countries. While some argue it aimed at solidifying Jewish support, others believe it stemmed from Kennedy's admiration for Israel and the desire for Middle East stability. Either way, it was a great move to strengthen U.S.-Israel relations. Other Presidents and Israel During Lyndon B. Johnson's presidency, relations between the U.S. and Israel were further cemented after the Six-Day War after Israel won against its Arab neighbors. Military relations were strengthened, and although the next president, Richard Nixon, tried to remain distant during his tenure, he eventually gave in and facilitated a massive military resupply to Israel. This came to be known as, known as Operation Nickel Grass. Jimmy Carter, Ronald Reagan, George Bush and Bill Clinton all aimed to improve U.S.-Israel relations during their tenure, as each of them knew the strategic significance of Israel. In the post 9 11 world, with entirely new global dynamics, things changed drastically. The U.S. and Israel became closer than ever, especially after the rise of terrorism after the Second Intifada. The two countries' military cooperation reached new heights. Even after the 2006 Lebanon War, the U.S. continued to support Israel unconditionally, demonstrating a mixture of strategic alignment, diplomatic challenges, and shared democratic values. Even while the world was falling apart, the U.S. and Israel remained closer than ever, and the American state supported Israel unequivocally, rejecting global pleas for a ceasefire in Lebanon. After Obama was elected, he made history in more than one way, becoming the first ever U.S. president to authorize the sale of bunker buster bombs to Israel. During his presidency, the Iron Dome missile defense system was developed, and the U.S. sent in a whopping $235 million in aid. Biden administration Biden confirmed early on in his term that the U.S. Embassy in Jerusalem was confirmed to remain, recognized as the capital. U.S. support for Israel was unwavering, and this became clear after the Al-Aqsa Mosque conflict in May 2021. Finally, a ceasefire was reached between Israel and Hamas on May 21, 2021, with President Biden pledging U.S. support for rebuilding Gaza. In July 2022, Biden visited Israel, bringing a $38 billion defense package as a gift. Biden has remained vocal in his support for Israel, especially in the wake of the recent war. After Hamas's surprise attack in October 2023, Joe Biden was quick to condemn the attacks, as well as readily offering any support that Israel might need. As a result of the ongoing war, Biden landed in Israel on October 18, 2023, and was received at Ben Gurion Airport by Israeli President Isaac Herzog and Prime Minister Netanyahu. Biden has consistently expressed unwavering support for Israel since the ongoing attacks against Palestinians started. He emphasized the severity of the situation, condemning it as a moment of pure evil that resurfaced horrible memories for Jews. He affirmed that the United States stands with Israel, pledging to ensure its defense against terrorism in accordance with international humanitarian law and committing all resources to secure the release of hostages held by Hamas, including fellow Americans. The war has resulted in devastating consequences, with Gaza health authorities reporting at least 11,500 confirmed deaths in an Israeli bombardment and ground invasion, including over 4,700 children. Two-thirds of the Gaza Strip's population of 2.3 million have been made homeless by the war. American-Israeli relations are stronger than ever, and the U.S. has made this abundantly clear. The two countries will definitely stand by each other no matter what.